Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. And I just want to say welcome to all the new subscribers. Thank you so much for joining this community. Even though I haven't been posting as much content lately, I did need to take a little bit of time out because I had quite a few client bookings come in. And when that happens, I tend to devote all my time to those readings. Um, so I've, I've been busy taking care of all of those. And I think that last month that we had with Mercury in retrograde, all the planets jam packed in Capricorn, that was really intense. And I know that physically it kind of knocked me out a little bit. Where I've got my planets, I can see that, yeah, en energy wise, it, it took a bit of a toll on me. So I needed to take a bit of time out. I also wanted to just focus on the readings because when one of you books me for a reading, I, I focus in and I, I spend a lot of time um, making sure I, I really internalize your chart, get to know your chart. I take my research notes and yeah, so I had, I had quite a few of you to attend to. So that's what happened in my jam-packed month with that Mercury retrograde. I wonder how your month went. Thank you to all of those on Instagram and even by email and, um, and on the YouTube comments here who wrote in and, and you know, said how your month was going. I heard that quite a few of you also had a pretty hectic time with that Mercury retrograde. So I think things are going to get better. I know things are going to get better. They are definitely going to get better. The year is going to improve, guys. It's, it's really going to improve. And I'm really looking forward to, especially when, I think it's April. I haven't clicked that far ahead, but April when, uh, when all this cognitive dissonance starts to subside this uh, Saturn Jupiter combination will be good when that you know I, basically when that that house empties a bit more and that's what I'm looking forward to that's going to help me a lot I know that for sure uh, let's have a look here there are quite a few things that I want to cover which I'm actually not going to cover in this video one of them is the Dutch election I will cover that in another video and some of the other recent news that I'd like to talk about. Uh, I'll actually save that for a, a separate video. We might do a little astro chat on that. So hopefully I will be able to get back to doing content. That's, that's what I'm really hoping in the coming weeks that I should be posting a little bit more regularly because I've missed making these videos. I've missed all of you. I've missed just hanging out, chatting, astrology, and you know, sharing my insights with you. I really enjoy doing that. So uh, I should be back to posting a bit more regularly. And what I'm gonna do this year is, I've kind of discovered with my energy the way it is, I think I'll need to, and, and with you know Saturn going deep into Capricorn, and that, that is gonna impact some of us energetically. I know it is for me. So what I'm gonna be doing is, I'll have a period where I upload content, and then I'll open my website, and then I'll have a period where I do bookings, and then you know I'll, I may not be as active on the YouTube, and then, um, you know, I'll, I'll come back on YouTube. That that might be how I do it this year. Let's see how we go. I'm I'm not going to uh, make any hard and fast rules because yeah, gosh, discipline and making rules and and trying to really stick to things is um, well. For me, I just I just love to have the, the physical energy, but I don't I don't have it right now. I know I will in the future. My Anthar Dasha will change at the end of this year, so I think things should improve for me then. But I know I I, I kind of know that this year I'm I'm going to have to pace myself. So if you don't see me on YouTube for a little while, please know that I'm probably I'm probably writing out content ideas. I'm probably, I've got scribbled so many ideas that I can't even tell you. I have so many things I wanna make, um, which I'm really, really excited to make. So I'm, if I'm not here on YouTube, I'm either doing readings for you guys or coming up with content or writing scripts or doing something. I'm definitely doing something um, or looking after my health. How about that? <laughs> So I'm probably doing one of those things or, yeah, I mean, and then when I'm on here, I'm on here, I'm back, aren't I? So let's get into the stars in brief. Let's take a look what's happening. 
This month of March, we're going to have Mars and Rahu come together. This is the event of the month. I do believe this is a major focus this month. It's a formidable conjunction and it's happening in Taurus. And the aspect of Taurus that I really want to focus on and take a look at, I wasn't sure when I was looking at this myself, I was like, hmm, I wonder how this is going to play out. And I was thinking it's going to be money. And I do think money is part of it, but a video came on my dashboard and it was these uh, German farmers who were protesting in Berlin. And I thought, oh yeah, this is, this is farming. This is food and farming for sure. Uh, you know, so I do think that this is going to be an amazing time for farmers to protest, for farmers to say no. This, hopefully this Mars and Rahu coming together is going to give power and strength to farmers of all sizes, from small to medium to big, whatever size of farmer you are, hopefully this Mars and Rahu conjunction will give you the power to, to take on some of these ridiculous new reg regulations that are coming out. I mean, it, it's just crazy. Uh, I've got the note here in India, our farmers are protesting new regulations that enable corporations to pick up power and that will hurt or wipe out small farmers. It's awful what's going on and I really do hope that um, that some progress is made and, and that, that, that this Mars and Rahu conjunction, which is really one about our fighting power, our ability to fight, you know, that's, that's Mars, our strength, our courage that warrior within us and then Rahu that ability to expand you know whatever it conjuncts I'm hoping that this uh, fighting combination will bring some wins where it's needed I was watching today a couple of hours of Vandana Shiva videos of her I actually recently um, bought her book which is called uh, hang on a minute what is it called oneness versus the one percent or the one percent versus oneness something like that i am going to read it and uh you know check that out in great detail i can't wait to get into that so i watched some videos of her today and she said that approximately three hundred thousand indian farmers have committed suicide in recent times i mean this this is you know if, even if there's just one you know but, but three hundred thousand is mind-boggling and it's too much uh, it's incredibly sad. So the footage that came up on my dashboard, I'm actually going to play some of that for you now so that you can see for yourself what, what it is that I saw. So these farmers in Germany drove their tractors through Berlin uh, to protest, basically. They've, they've got a similar protest on their hands. And yeah, this is the footage that I found, which hopefully is on the screen now, um, I found it extremely powerful. One of the banners read no farmers no food no future so this mars and rahu conjunction is going to be all month uh, and into april but it really comes to a head sort of march 24th to 26th those are the really important dates where hopefully voices are heard and, and changes happen you know um i've got a note here in the united states this conjunction is crucial as well for america it indicates a change possibly to the financial system. Now I'm taking a guess here. I'm not sure as to whether this is uh, correct or not, but I've been studying broadly and I've learned about this thing called you know, quantum financial system. And people are talking about how that's going to be put in place fairly soon. So again, I'm not 100% sure on uh, that content or how true that is, but when I was looking at this astrologically, this conjunction in relation to the United States chart, it's really interesting because um, the conjunction of these two, Mars and Rahu, is happening fourth from the United States moon, which is you know, fourth from some matter of national importance for the whole country. Uh, and it's seventh from the ascendant. So that would be to do with money markets, to do with exchange, right? So it could well be that an alternate or a new system of money is brought into place. I'm not sure. That's one interpretation of what could be coming up this month. 
It's really interesting to note as well that this conjunction is happening over United States natal Uranus, right? And the last time we saw that on this channel was when I did the little astro chat piece about Rupert Murdoch. And I said that, I think it was, I can't remember, the three were involved. So it was um, Mars Rahu Uranus. And I think it might have been when Mars was passing over Uranus and Rahu conjunct in his chart. I don't know the exact specifics, but I remember Mars was moving, I think. And when Mars passed over Uranus or had some connection with Uranus, uh, he immediately changed the, like an about turn, he changed all the headlines in his uh, news outlets. It was a really fascinating thing to watch. So I do think that some event is going to happen for America uh, around this time. So uh, what are the dates? So I've got here, yeah, it's happening over US natal Uranus. Expect a sudden change. Okay, we've got Uranus here, sudden change. I've got the note here, please be careful in America, 21st March through to 28th March. 24th is really the main date from what I saw when I was clicking through. But I mean, it could be in the lead up and a little bit afterwards. So just be careful around that time. So is there anything good happening in the sky? Yes, there is. We've got some good things happening. I do think, you know, this is this is the month where we're going to start to see some improvement this year. It's an improvement with limits, okay? There's still heavy Saturn all year. Uh, and, and a lot of us are having to adjust. You know, as I was sharing at the start of this video, I'm having to adjust. I don't have the same energy that I used to have, you know, three, four, five years ago. You know, I used to be able to do heaps of work and I was perfectly well and it's a really interesting time. I don't have that energy right now. So, you know, what's, what's the good news that's coming this month? There is some good news. Venus and Sun are together in Pisces. I do like this energy. I think this is going to be quite nice. And I think that it has the potential to offset uh, some of the other things that are taking place, like that, that Mars Rahu, for example, you know, at least we've got, we can have Venus in a beautiful spot, right? So, so hopefully that should, that shouldn't mean that this Mars Rahu conjunction is too severe because Venus is, is beautifully placed. So this can be energizing, can potentially be too energizing, depending on where it is for your chart. Gosh, that is a loud bird. Can you hear that? Wow. Was that a crow? It might have been a crow. Hmm. Uh, 17th March onwards, what have we got going on? We've got Mercury alone in Aquarius. This is really interesting. I was thinking about Mercury alone in Aquarius and I was thinking, who's got Mercury alone in their chart in terms of celebrities and case studies that I've gone into deeply? One of those is David Icke. Okay, I'm a big fan of David Icke. I love his work. Uh, and in his birth chart, he's got Mercury alone in Pisces which is Jupiter, right? So we could say, you know, distilled wisdom <coughs> is here that he's able to distill wisdom. But it's really interesting that the information that he is imparting, which is a very mercurial thing, it's, it's kind of dark information, right? There's no sun here illuminating things. There's no sun here brightening things. He's just given it to you straight. He's giving you, okay, this is, and he's joining the dots, right? So what, what has he got? He's got, do I have his chart here? Let's just bring him up quickly. Oh, I don't have his chart here. I'm just gonna bring it up really quickly. I've been looking at a lot of charts today. Uh, let's have a look at David. So information, what kind of information is he giving out? Look at that, and he's the dot connector, isn't he? So he's got Mercury in the sixth house, which is fantastic, but it's debilitated in Pisces. Okay, but it, that's not a problem at all. I, I really do, for me, that where it sits housewise is, I, I tend to think a little bit more important. Uh, and he calls himself the dot connector, which he certainly is. And I did a pick a card all about that. You know, you've got the kind of mind where you join dots. He's got that kind of mind. And that's Mercury being in Pisces, right? He connects the dots between everything. There are, there are no boundaries here. He, he can see connections with ease. So I started thinking about, okay, what are we going to have in this month of March with uh, Mercury being alone? And I thought, well, are we going to have some information coming our way 
right? So this is Aquarius. We could certainly have some information coming our way. I, I, can, I could, yeah, I count uh, Aquarius as being media as well. It's air, so third house is really media, but 11th house can be too for the collective consciousness. So I was thinking, you know, are we gonna get some information that is logical, practical, but there's no sun here. Could it be cold information? Could it be scientific information? I do tend to find that scientists have got um, great, uh, there's, there's a scientist I'm thinking of, she's got a PhD and she's a client who, who came to me and uh, I'm pretty sure her Mercury is, was up there in the 12th house. Um, but yeah, could this information that we sh receive be kind of okay scientific logical practical there's no sun here could it be cold and dark could it be you know some conspiracy theory type information coming to the to the fore to the collective consciousness you know to light right i've got the note here how do you like your conspiracy theories straight up or on the rocks well for me i don't mind taking my conspiracy theories any which way i as I've said on this channel before, I always like to hear different sources and, and different ideas and different things. For me, that's just interesting. And uh, we are continuing with that Saturn and Jupiter conjunction there in Capricorn, which, as I've said on the channel before, is all about cognitive dissonance. And in the episode where I talked about cognitive dissonance, I quoted F. Scott, F. Scott Fitzgerald. I didn't quote him precisely. I've got the exact quote on my screen now, so I'm going to quote him right now. He says... The test of a first-rate intelligence is the ability to hold two opposing ideas in mind at the same time and still retain the ability to function. So is some of that going to be tested? Maybe, you know, with this Mercury position. Are we going to receive some information that, uh, you know, we have to hold alongside some opposing ideas within ourselves, right? So these were some of the things I was thinking about for this month, but let's take a look at the moon situation. So we've got, well, I'm recording this on the 24th. I'm recording part of this on the 24th. I'll record all the mini reports tomorrow. I'm gonna to break up how I do these because yeah, it can take a bit of time. So uh, on the 27th of Feb, we've got a Leo full moon. So I hope you've had the chance to be really creative. I was looking forward very much to this um, Leo full moon and it turns out that the energy was so intense over the last month that I haven't had a chance to implement half of the things I wanted to do before this full moon, but that's okay. So let's have a look. When's the next moon phase? We've got 13th March, Aquarius, new moon. Okay, this is quite nice. Purva Bhadra Pada. I've got the note here, great time to experience a certain detachment from the world. Okay. Uh, that will be a nice time to, to detach if, if we possibly can. That's how I'm reading that one. And on the 28th and 29th of March, we've got Virgo in Hasta, Virgo Hasta full moon. Okay, so I've got the note here, you'll want to get hands on, you want to be in control, you want to take charge. And that's really going to be the theme actually for March because of that Mars and Rahu conjunction. That is a lot of great masculine energy, energy to do something, drive ambition. So that's what we're going to look at in the mini readings for this month. I'm going to take a look at, you know, how, how able will you be to really take charge and take control of your life this month. So I'll see you in your mini reading. Hi everyone, I've just put in a new memory card and we're good to go through the whole zodiac. Let's do this. So any of you who watch the whole thing, come on a journey with me. Let's see what's happening all around the zodiac. Okay, so Aries Moon, welcome Aries Moon. Thank you so much for joining. Now on the 12th of March, Mercury is going to be in your 11th house. And as I mentioned in the introduction, Mercury is gonna be on his own, right? So how is this gonna, impact you with what you've got going on. Now you've got Saturn uh, there in Capricorn in the 10th house. I'm looking at how Mercury is going to feed into Saturn because Saturn owns both of these houses. So I think this placement of Mercury is going to help you speak up at work in a way that is logical, practical and to the point. 
On the 17th onwards, you're going to have Venus and Sun in your 12th house. This is quite nice from Venus's side, right? But the Sun is not the best, it's not the best position for the Sun. So you might find that you're sleepless, you're a bit restless. If you are a bit sleepless at night, keep a good book by your bedside. Uh, keep a journal by your bedside as well. I always get ideas, sometimes at like 3 a.m. and like a part of a script will start coming through and I will write it down the next day, but it's never quite the same. So do have some paper by your bed. That's always a good idea. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm liking Venus and Sun in your 12th house. This is, this is nice. Um, despite the sleeplessness okay and that, that's not likely to be for the whole thing it just might happen a bit here and there uh, you also might want to keep a dream journal around this time okay those two being there it might just illuminate something in your subconscious okay so it could be good to keep a dream journal or to work with your dream state at that time some people like to do the whole thing where you know before you sleep you ask uh, to work with a particular person sometimes it, and if you get up at 2 or 3 a.m i've heard that that's a really good time if you're like having an argument with someone or having difficulties what you can do is kind of request to speak to their higher self and then talk to them in a, in a really authentic way so that could be something that you might consider doing if you're if you're up at, up at night now we've got a Virgo has the full moon that's going to be happening in your sixth house at the very end of the month so we're looking at about the 29th of March depending on where you are it might even be the 28th I've got this Sydney Australia time it's telling me 29th March so that's happening in your sixth house at the end of the month now how I'm going to read this Virgo has the full moon is that energy is building, building, building. It's, it's growing, growing, growing. What else is growing at, you know, over the course of this month? The Mars Rahu energy is also growing. And there is a bit of a connection with this full moon because Mars and Rahu are in Taurus. And Venus is kind of a little bit involved in this full moon. Venus is conjunct the sun there. So I'm reading Ra Mars and Rahu together with the full moon this time and these both building energies okay so how am i reading this yeah this is a thing of taking control this full moon is about the desire to take control so that's what i'm seeing that you will have a desire that builds over the month that you want to take control of something where are you best going to be able to do that i'm going to say your career and your wealth you should be able to feel like you're making some progress or you should be able to feel like you can get on top of some things or you can be in charge a bit more you'll certainly want to and uh, see how you go with this month i do think this is a good month to possibly get on top of some things uh, and to feel like you're making some progress and to actually make progress that's what we really want to do right so aries moon it's it's a pretty good month for you i'm wishing you well thank you so much for joining and we are now going to meet Taurus Moon. Taurus Moon, welcome. I'm just looking at the time. All right, what have we got going on? So on the 12th of March, we've got Mercury stepping into your 10th house. Now in the introduction, I mentioned that Mercury is going to be on his own. Okay, so this is quite interesting. And how I'm going to read this is to show how Mercury is going to feed into your Saturn placement. Now I'm reading this to be that if it's part of your job to teach other people this is going to be a good time for you to be absolutely crystal clear in your communication to be very stark and uh, really just communicate in a way that is grounded practical logical to the point it's not going to be terribly emotional you're just going to get real with whoever it is that you're teaching if part of your job requires you to teach or impart information to other people now on the 17th onwards venus and the sun are going to be in your 11th house oh this is beautiful energy i'm so happy for you taurus moon this is good this is beautiful energy to get ahead uh, to make some wins to earn money to spend money to be social right this is just beautiful energy so from the perspective of your soul and from your feminine side you know there's some really lovely energy coming through here definitely a great time to be creative 
makes some headway on your projects, all that kind of thing. We've got a Virgo Hustle full moon on the 29th of March happening in your fifth house. All right, so that's at the end of the month and that's just going to be building. That energy is going to be building and there's some area in your life where you really want to, you feel like you want to take control or you want to take charge, right? You really want to feel like you got a handle on things. So I'm going to read this full moon together with your Mars and Rahu in the first house because we've got Venus as, uh, you know, the Lord of your first house there and Venus is conjunct the sun as Venus is kind of part of this full moon situation. So uh, I'm reading all this together and I'm going to say that you can really take control in your creative projects this month, definitely. And, and together with sun and Venus in your 11th house, this is beautiful energy for you to make good progress on your creativity and yeah, hopefully, hopefully get ahead work-wise this month. So Taurus Moon, thank you so much for joining. And we are now going to meet Gemini Moon. Gemini Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. All right, so on the 12th of March, we've got Mercury in your ninth house. Okay, Mercury steps into your ninth and this is going to be good. This is going to be good. It will help bring some logic, some groundedness, some good clear communication, perhaps even some ideas uh, and innovative ideas in the realm of your family relationships. If there is something you need to restructure, perhaps even to do with your partner. I've got here a note, especially to do with your father. That is interesting. Yes, absolutely. Ninth house, of course. Yes, dad is here too. Could be partner, could be father. So this is bringing in some logic, practicality, groundedness, ideas, you know, innovation. So uh, what would this be? This would be, let's have a think, in a relationship. Some kind of practical, logical idea that will just help ease things, just help make things run a bit better. There's a real potential to, to resolve something, but to be stark about it, not to be emotional about it. Okay, so that's one of the things that I'm seeing here. It's quite interesting. I'm just kind of going back and looking at the chart and seeing this play out. These, these are really interesting energies. Uh, it's going to be an interesting month. Now on the 17th onwards, we've got Venus and Sun in your 10th house. This is good energy. This is really good energy to do with your career. Venus isn't too pleased to be here, but the Sun, I do believe, loves being in this position. So this is great, great time to make progress in your career. Now the whole month we've got Virgo, Hasta Nakshatra, Full Moon. Right, so the energy is going to be building, building, building up the whole month up until about the 29th of March. That's when we're going to have that full moon. This is happening in your fourth house. And then we've got Mars and Rahu in the 12th house there. So I'm going to read these two together and I'm going to say that this is a great time to master letting go. Okay, if you've ever wanted to learn the art of surrender, if you want to be really good at that, and I do recommend it, that is a great thing to learn. That's something that we keep being tested on all our lives, right? So uh, this is the perfect month to really practice letting go. I've got here, you can really let go old beliefs and anything to do connected with mum, any beliefs about how you were raised or your childhood or your relationship with your mother. This can be a really good time to just shed all those old beliefs, anything that might be holding you back. All right, Gemini Moon, well, thank you so much for joining. Hi there Cancer Moon, welcome Cancer Moon to your outlook for the month. So on the 12th of March we've got Mercury stepping into your 8th house. So this will help you transform aspects of your business or your marriage. Why am I saying that? That's clearly 7th house stuff. Well Mercury is going to be feeding into Saturn. Saturn's the lord of uh, your 7th and 8th houses. So. Mercury is going to be feeding in some logic or some innovation or, or something very practical to Saturn and that's going to be for you in the area of your business or your marriage. Could also be your public, um, maybe you run a YouTube channel, maybe you write books, that kind of thing. So some innovation or some logic or 
something grounded or practical uh, is going to to emerge hopefully and be used by Saturn in a very real way. So on the 17th onwards we've got Venus and Sun in the ninth house. This could be power struggles with dad, it could be power struggles with authority, right? Uh, this could be the, a really great time. So that's to do with the Sun being there in the ninth house. Venus is beautifully placed here. So it's a really great time to be studying something, to be sharpening your intellect, to be being creative, um, to be you know, taking your skills to the next level, that kind of thing. It's a really good time for that. Now there's a Virgo Hastha Nakshatra full moon, which is happening in your third house at the end of the month. So this is around 29th March. So you want, might want to look up the date closer to March. It could be 28th, 29th, depending on where you are. Um, this is great. Oh, plus Mars Rahu in the 11th. Fantastic. This month, you're going to be building up. And in some area of your life, you're going to be wanting to take more control. You're going to want to take charge of something. You want to get on and do something. You want to achieve. You want to create. You've got the planetary energy to do that. This Virgo full moon is going to be fantastic for you. Together with your Mars Rahu in the 11th, this is beautiful energy to take charge in your projects. Uh, there should be courage building all month. And that courage should really help you do the tasks and do what's needed to take your business or your enterprise to the next level. So Cancer Moon, this is a really nice energy for you here. So I'm wishing you well. And we are now going to meet Leo Moon. Leo Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now on the 12th of March, Mercury steps into your seventh house. And how I'm reading this is that Mercury is going to be feeding something back to Saturn, which is in the house before. So this will allow you to see things from another person's point of view, okay? Uh, and this should help you in your career, right? You're going to get that other perspective uh, with Mercury's position, and that's really going to feed into Saturn. So on the 17th onwards, we've got Venus and Sun in your 8th house. There could be power struggles with in-laws, potentially. Uh, but overall, this is a very lovely time for your relationship, okay? Venus is doing great in this spot here. Now Virgo has the nakshatra full moon. This is happening in your second house at the end of the month. So this could be the 29th of March. It could be the 28th of March, depending where you are. Uh, this plus Mars or Rahu in the 10th, you'll be wanting to take charge in your career. So you're going to have this feeling of, I want to take charge of my life. You know, I really want to do, I want to achieve. There'll be this growing energy within you. But what I'm saying is do make progress in your career, but don't push it, okay? Um, <coughs> sun in the 8th could be taxing health-wise. So you might just want to take care of your health in that regard. All right, Leo Moon, well, thank you so much for joining. And we are now going to welcome Virgo Moon. Virgo Moon, thank you so much for joining. Now on the 12th of March, we've got Mercury moving into your sixth house. This will help bring a strategic quality to your creativity this month. And I'm talking about your creativity because Saturn is the Lord of Capricorn and Aquarius. For you, that is your fifth house and sixth house. So that's why I'm suggesting that, you know, Mercury is going to help <coughs> where Saturn is placed. Now on the 17th onwards, we've got Venus and Sun in the seventh house. Yeah, this is not the best, guys. Uh, I will be perfectly honest with you. These are not the best, especially when it comes to, I would say, your partnership, your marriage, any of that. These, they're not placed in the best way. But this could be really good for your social media, for your public presence. Perhaps you write books um, or you run a YouTube channel or any of that. <coughs> this could be really good for that. So... It's not bad, okay? Uh, it's not bad if you're a public facing person. We've got Virgo, Hastha Nakshatra, full moon happening in your first house at the end of the month. So that is really 29th March, could be 28th March. You might want to check on that when you get closer to the day. But basically, for the entire month, we've got this amazing full moon that's coming in. It's, it's really building up this energy within you that's, I want to take charge of my life. 
So when I have a look at this together with Mars Rahu, another building energy that's happening <clears throat> in your chart, that's really happening in your 10th house. So when we've got these two together, definitely I can see that you'll be wanting to take charge in terms of becoming your own authority in life. You'll be wanting to take charge of your finances. You'll be wanting to get on top of things. And definitely that thing of being your own authority, right? That's going to be important to you. I've got the note here, take your power back. And I've written that in big capital letters because I think this will be a great month for you to see perhaps where your power has been invested and where you might want to draw that power back from. Maybe it's been invested in society. Maybe it's been invested in companies or, you know, that I have a certain job and maybe <clears throat> you might decide that, you know what, I don't want to do that anymore or whatever it is, right? There'll be something within you that will start to shift and that will start to change. So Virgo Moon, thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Libra Moon. Libra Moon, welcome. <clears throat> thank you so much for joining. Apologies, I've got a bit of a frog in my throat. I'm going to keep pressing on if I can. I don't know what this is or why. I've been perfectly fine all day, but there it is. Um, okay, so on the 12th of March, Mercury is going to move into your fifth house. So this might bring some innovative ideas on how you can restructure your daily life. Okay, and I'm seeing it in this way because you've got Saturn in your fourth house. So Mercury is going to be feeding something into Saturn because Saturn is the lord of the two houses here. So on the 17th onwards, we've got Venus and Sun in your sixth house. So it's not great for love life, not great for romance, but it is brilliant for work. So I do see you winning this month in terms of work. <coughs> we've got Virgo. Hastha Nakshatra full moon. This is happening in your 12th house and that's towards the end of the month. So this big beautiful moon energy is accumulating the whole time. Uh, we've also got another big accumulating energy which is Mars Rahu in the 8th and I'm going to read these two together. So you, you might find as the month goes on you'll be more tired actually. This, this could be a tricky one on the energy. This could be a bit of a drain on the energy. So please rest in the lead up to this full moon, you might find this full moon to be a bit tiring or a bit draining or a bit taxing. Uh, it's a really good time to let go of beliefs, old beliefs, master letting go, mastering surrender, right? And especially beliefs regarding your relationships. What are some old beliefs that have been holding you back in your personal relationships with family, friends, lovers, all that kind of thing? This is a really good time to review all of that to feel those feelings or beliefs to the full and just really let them go uh, at, the end of, uh, at the end of the month. So Libra Moon, I'm wishing you well. Thank you so much for joining. And we are now going to welcome... <coughs> oh, sorry about this. I'm just like, <laughs> my throat is too much today. And I've been stopping and starting the camera the whole time. It's been terrible. Okay. Scorpio Moon. Scorpio Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, on the 12th of March, we've got Mercury in your fourth house. Uh, this will bring logic and groundedness to the way that you present yourself, okay? Because you've got Saturn in the third there, which is, you know, media, how you present yourself, all that kind of thing. But Mercury's going to bring something new to that, which is quite exciting, okay? Uh, very interesting. On the 17th onwards, we've got Venus and Sun in your fifth house. So this could be issues with authority, Sun, okay? You might find yourself having clashes with your superiors at work, things like that. Um, but this is brilliant for creativity and it's brilliant for time with your children as well. We've got a Virgo Hastha Nakshatra full moon, which is happening in your 11th house at the end of the month. And that's the 29th of March, 28th of March, depends, um, but I've got it Sydney, Australia, 29th March here. So that might be something you want to check on. But you've got this 
big beautiful moon energy building the whole month and this is really the energy of you wanting to take control or take charge in some area of your life so I'm also looking at Mars Rahu in your seventh I'm looking at this full moon together with that building energy and I'm saying that you might find yourself wanting to build your business empire bigger and stronger and better and you know you might want to grow and all that kind of thing I'm saying though that you might come up against some slight uh, emotional limits okay especially if you in your business you work with a partner or anything like that so so enjoy that energy but don't push it too hard okay uh, I've also got a note here to be take it easy in your marriage okay if you find yourself really wanting to say something uh, find the moment you know find the moment find the right time and and don't don't push anything uh, too much this month but it's looking like a really good month overall for you Scorpio moon especially you've got that beautiful Saturn there in the third house it's so wonderful so Scorpio moon thank you so much for joining and we are now going to welcome Sagittarius moon Sagittarius moon welcome thank you so much for joining now on the 12th of March we've got Mercury moving into your third house now because Saturn is Lord of your second and third house I'm kind of reading the two together and I'm seeing what is it that Mercury is feeding into Saturn there so I'm going to say that this will bring logic and groundedness to the way that you speak okay um, now on the 17th onwards we've got Venus and Sun in your fourth house you might find that you have some issues with authority that's the Sun but this is great for experiencing the comforts of home okay which we're all doing right now aren't we so um, but you'll be enjoying it you won't feel you won't have cabin fever or want to get out or any of that uh, we've got Virgo Hasta Nakshatra full moon this is going to be happening in your 10th house at the end of the month so we're really looking at 29th March on my system here for Sydney Australia that's what it's saying where you are it might be a bit different might be 28th might be a day here or there but I'm looking at this beautiful full moon which is indicating that you're going to want to take charge in some area of your life and I'm going to look at this together with Mars Rahu in the sixth oh how fantastic so you've got the energy to take control or take charge of your career okay you've got the potential to win if you're in any legal battles or any of that um, you've got great energy here and, and really great energy to not only feel like you're taking control or taking charge of your life but you'll actually do it you've got the you've got everything going on here so I really feel there's good energy here for you Sagittarius moon uh, I've also got the note here that you've got winning energies in the sky for career growth yes absolutely it's a good month basically Sagittarius moon so I'm really glad that this is a good month for you and we are now going to welcome Capricorn moon Capricorn moon welcome thank you so much for joining now on the 12th of March we've got Mercury moving into your second house so because I'm reading this house is Aquarius and I'm going to read this with Capricorn together so this will help you get real with your life goals okay um, it'll also help you just overall become a bit more practical and a bit more grounded all right so we don't have there's no emotional energy here as such it's just practical grounded what are we doing let's get on with it that kind of thing um, now from the 17th onwards we've got Venus and Sun in your third house so this is beautiful energy I love this wow this is great uh, this is a great time to put yourself forward for anything for a new job or you know if you want to go dating or any of that new friends you putting yourself forward to the world um, it's also a great time to get your LinkedIn photo taken or something like that your professional photos taken or, or whatever it is uh, maybe you want to get a haircut or you know do something with your style or something like that so this is a really good time for that there's Virgo Hasta Nakshatra full moon happening in your ninth house towards the end of the month so we're looking at 29th March could be 28th depending on where you are uh, let's have a look at this I'm going to read that together with Mars and Rahu in your fifth house and I'm going to say that there's somewhere where you really want to feel like you're taking control of your life you're taking charge of your life now for you yeah I think this is great energy for you to feel like you're taking charge um, and it's kind of to do with leadership it's to do with 
you being the leader of your own life and being self-made and that self-making quality to the life and it's a really great time to take power back regarding authority so you can have a look at the places where you've invested authority where you think someone has authority over you uh, and, and it can be in incredibly small places sometimes we don't realize you know where, where we're giving our power away um, yeah there, there's all kinds of small places so I think this is going to be a good month for you Capricorn Moon. I, I, I think I know you're in Sadisati, I know this is a tough time right now, but um, I actually think this should be a pretty stable month for you. And I think that surge of Mars Rahu there happening in your fifth, this could also be good for your creativity as well. This could, you know, maybe you're going to have some nice creative energy, some inspiration come through for some creative endeavors. So I'm liking this month a lot for you Capricorn Moon. I want to thank you for stopping by. We are now going to welcome Aquarius Moon. Aquarius Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So now on the 12th of March, we've got Mercury stepping into your first house. So this could help you let go of beliefs that aren't working for you. And I'm really saying this because Saturn is there in your 12th house. Uh, and I'm kind of reading the two together, Saturn and Mercury together. And, and this is really, I'm thinking that, you know, you should be able to let go of beliefs that aren't working for you, especially around career, okay? And what you do in the world and your life purpose and who you are. Now on the 17th onwards, we've got Venus and Sun in your second house. So this is really good energy to maybe buy something beautiful. If there's been something you've been eyeing out that you really wanna purchase or something like that. Um, I've got a note here, be careful of conflicts at home or be careful of, you know, authority, right? Clashes of authority uh, in the household, okay? So that is something that you might want to look at and just be careful of, right? Um, you know, that way you can sort of sense, okay, do I need to take a bit of time out? Do I need to do something a bit different here? Or what do I need to do, right? Uh, you might be wanting to do that at some point this month. Let's take a look at that Virgo Hastha Nakshatra full moon for you. So that's happening in your eighth house at the end of the month. Now I'm looking at this together with, because there's going to be this feeling where you want to take control of some aspect of your life. You want to take charge, you want to take control. So I'm going to read this together with your Mars and Rahu in the fourth. And I'm going to say that you've got great energy to take control or take charge of your health. Okay. Uh, take your self-care to new heights with these energies and and you know really see if you can take your power back from the small places where it might be invested so I'll give you an example of this um, some years ago I you know would always just have a cup of coffee something to cure a headache or I would take paracetamol or whatever it is but now I'm like no I'm taking my power back I'm not going to do that anymore I you know I want to be healthy and chemical free and all that kind of thing. And can I can I do without it? Is there a breathing asana or some yoga or something that I can do, some pranayama or something that I can do to just offset the stress of the headache and things like that? So you might want to be doing something along those lines. Um, but this is this is a good month for that Aquarius Moon. See if you can really take charge of your health and uh, don't outsource it anymore to anyone else. Okay. But I mean, if, if you need to, I'm not saying don't see a doctor or something like that or don't take medicine. No, I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is that, you know, if you can slowly start to take your power back, you've got some energy in the sky that's helping you do that. All right. Well, thank you so much, Aquarius Moon, for joining. And we are now going to welcome Pisces Moon. Pisces Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Let's take a look at the month for you. So we've got 12th March. Mercury moves into your 12th house and this is going to help you structure your life better and structure your future goals a bit better because I'm really reading uh, your 12th house and your 11th house in this instance. I'm looking at Mercury with Saturn as well. So this is to do with structuring your life better, structuring your future goals. You might want to dream up some future goals actually um, and jot those down this month that could be a good thing to do 
Now, from the 17th onwards, we've got Venus and Sun in your first house. So this can be energizing for the physical body. See how you go. Venus is definitely happy here, but Sun, Sun might be a bit draining. Sometimes people can feel pressure headaches and things like that. Um, I do think this combination should be very energizing for the physical body. That is definitely what I believe. So, uh, but see how you go. For some, some people it might, the sun in the first house might be a bit of a drain somewhere, energy drain. We've got Virgo, Hastanakshatra, full moon, and that's happening in your seventh house at the end of the month. Now I'm gonna read this together with your Mars Rahu in the third, because both of these are culminating energies that are, you know, really, really important this month and especially that Virgo has the full moon that's beautiful and that's a big energy of wanting to take control or wanting to take charge of some aspect of our lives right so you'll want to take charge in terms of your business definitely you'll have a huge amount of confidence with Mars Rahu there in the third you feel like you you know you've got, you've got the potential to feel like you want to take on the world right that's great placement so can you really make some headway, uh, really you know, take your projects to the next level or, or inch something up or, you know, and it, this could be career as well. You might, you know, take, um, take steps in your career. And these can be steps of any kind, you know, even if it's just you making plans, um, you brainstorming ideas, you finding out a new way to structure things or, you know, the steps I'm talking about don't have to be huge. They can be just small incremental steps, but I feel like not only will you have the ability to feel like you can take charge of your life, but you'll have things backing you up and things actually happening and manifesting in that regard. So I've got the note here, you'll have a lot of confidence, make the most of this energy. I love this month for you, Pisces Moon. I think it's looking like a really good month ahead for you. All right, well, thank you so much for joining me. And please stick around on the channel. I should be back to making content. I have missed making content so much. I love YouTube and I love making things. And it has been so annoying to me that I haven't been able to make as much content lately, but. Don't you worry, I'm getting back into it. And that's one of the reasons why I've made the booking thing unavailable uh, on my website because I just need time and um, I just, yeah, I'm not going to take readings for a little while so that I can get some content out, right? And then once I've got some content out, then I'll uh, open up the bookings again. So thank you so much to those of you who tune in and watch these reports. It's so wonderful to have you here and I look forward to seeing you next time.